unboxing another donation today. This one from Jody. Let's take it out of the box and see what it is. Here we have it. Amplifier RE Audio. Release the beast. DTS 500.2. Two channel high power MOSFET amplifier. Apparently from around 2012. Here on one end of the amp, we just have very simple RCA inputs, non-Tiffany style gain control, bass boost, 6 dB, 12 dB or off, low pass filter, a switch for low pass, flat or high pass, variable high pass filter and a power and protect LED. So a lot of stuff going on here on this one end of the amp. It doesn't have outputs, it just has RCA inputs, but it is an expensive amp. Here on the opposite side, we have the speaker outputs as well as the power connections. First up, the speaker block here, you can see it has screw down terminals, but uh, it does insert as well, so it doesn't give you a whole lot of room for wiring. A 25 amp ATC style fuse, and there's a 12 volt remote and ground again via the screw down insert terminals. So there we have a very basic overall look of this DTS 500.2 from RE Audio. Let's pull up the manual. We can see there were several different models, six different models of the DTS around the year 2012. And I have beef with the release the beast because as we know, Orion had the original and will always be the beast, the XTR 2250. Anyway, I digress. Back to the RE Audio DTS 500.2. You can see it ranged in price from around $69 to around $100, I guess, depending on when you purchased it. Both of these ads here were showing it discontinued. As far as dimensions go, 9.8 inches by 8.7 by 3 inches, millimeter equivalents are there as well. As far as the ratings go, according to the manual, 4 ohms 50 by 2, 2 ohms 80 by 2, 4 ohms bridged 160 watts. These are all at 14.4 volts. Now, what time is better than now to put it on the amp dyno? Find out what power it actually does. Try the 4 ohm test first at 1 kilohertz, certified up to 1% distortion, rated 50 watts by 2. We get 58 and 62, so right at 60 watts average per channel does better than rated. Let's switch over to dynamic. Again, 1 kilohertz burst tone. There you can see. 62 and 69 at right at 14.37 volts. All right, let's switch over to two ohms. It's rated 80 watts by two at 14.4. One kilohertz tone, two ohms, certified to 1%. Oh yes, 87 watts per channel right at 14.1 volts. So we like to see an amplifier do its rated power. Dynamically, it gets over 100, here you can see. A little bit of channel discrepancy there, but not too bad. About 10%. 14.3 volts. All right, let's switch it over to the mono setting. Try 4 ohms mono. It is rated 160 watts at 4 ohms mono. Run the test here at 1 kilohertz. Certified to 1% distortion. There you go. 181 at 14.2. Rated 160, so it did its rate of power plus a little more. That's what we like to see. Uncertified up to the clipping point. Let's see what we get here. And yep, 185 at 14.2. Now let's send that dynamic test. Actually, we're doing the certified test at 40 hertz. Let's see if we get the 160 and we're close. We get 156. So pretty much right at it because our voltage was just a little bit low. Now let's switch over to dynamic and back to the one kilohertz track. Oh yeah, busting over 200. Check this out, 221. We can get any more? Nope, 221 at 14.33. As for the results, here you can see those. I just showed all the tests. Efficiency numbers are on the right. This is a class AB amplifier. So we don't expect very high efficiency. And that's what we got is <laughs> not very high efficiency. But overall, the amp performed well. It did its rated power in all ohm loads. So thumbs up. Now let's hook it up to the ELAC bookshelf speakers, providing some sound qualityness. And let's see. How well it sounds.
these sound tests I do are not designed for critical listening, just really listening to find out if there's anything that sounds wrong, make sure it actually handles the bass notes well. This amp did well overall, can't really complain. Now let's take out the six screws out of the bottom of the amp so we can take off the cover and take a look at the internals. Psych, I'm just kidding. I'm really gonna show you. I'm not, I put my hand there kind of as a size reference. Here you can see the single sided circuit board, capacitors, very small transformer. Again, this amp was their most budget model 2012. We see the 35 volt 2200 microfarad capacitors there. 25 volt 1000 microfarad on the power supply side and yeah overall very generic very inexpensive class ab design i do show the transistors here for you guys who are technicians if you want to talk about those leave a comment below about what you think about these are they any good are they super cheap just let us all know because i really didn't take the time to look it up on this amp i'll be honest well there we have overall the DTS 500.2 from RE Audio from around 2012. This amp did perform up to its rated specifications a little bit over, so you did get what you expected from this amp. We did release the beast. It did not blow up on the dyno, performed well. Hope you guys enjoyed this look back at the RE Audio amp. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. RE Audio. Two ohms bridged. Dynamic. Two eighty three fourteen point two six. RE Audio. Uh, what is this? Five hundred dot two. Will it do? One point three three bridge. Dynamic. I doubt it. Let's see. Oh, 240 and then it went into, we're going to protect. Went into protect, let's cycle it off. Back on. No protect. Nice protection built in.